Hello, welcome to your first homework video. I am Mr. Stewart. In this video, I'm just going to be introducing myself and giving you a quick rundown of what to expect for your homework and what some of the class details will be. So this video is going to cover both my biology classes and my AP bio classes. A little bit about me, I am originally from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, in fact, this is the house over here that I grew up in as a child. It is not nearly as beautiful as it is here in Portland. My education, um, I originally got a bachelor's of education from Arizona State University, uh, focused on biology specifically there. Uh, recently, I just received my Master of Science from Portland State University in Curriculum and Instruction. And just this last summer, I was a fellow at Stanford University, part of their Hollyhock Fellowship, and I've been teaching at Franklin for four years. This is the beginning of my fifth year. I'd like to start off talking to you about some of my values and philosophy of teaching. I absolutely love science. I think it is one of the most important set of skills that you can have in school and out of school. Science is the process of trying to explain and understand everything at the universe, from the massively large to the infinitesimally small. And we use data and evidence to support our claims. And any claims that are made by scientists and scientific reasoning have to be able to be repeated by other scientists. They have to be able to be shown to be true in all situations. And it is through science and scientific thinking that we have the power to save the world from all the damage that we as humans have caused. And we have the power to transform human existence for the better. So as your teacher this year, I'm gonna be working with all of you to help you become better scientists. Whether you want a career in science or not, the skills of science are vitally important for whatever you will do. There's a passage here that underlines the importance of science. It says, suppose it were perfectly certain that the life and fortune of every one of us would depend upon his or her winning or losing a game of chess. Don't you think that we would all consider it to be a primary duty to learn at least the names and the moves of the pieces? Yet it is a very plain and elementary truth that the life fortune, and happiness of every one of us do depend upon our knowing something of the rules of a game infinitely more difficult and complicated than chess. The chessboard is the world. The pieces are the phenomena of the universe. The rules of the game are what we call the laws of nature. So that is why I feel it is so important that everybody learns how to be a scientist, how to act and think scientifically. So in this class, we're not just going to memorize a bunch of facts. We're not going to memorize a bunch of words. That's not science. Instead, we're going to focus on skills. We're going to focus on being able to ask questions and use data to support an argument, be able to use models to predict and explain something that's happening in nature. We're going to be able to communicate data, communicate evidence, and communicate scientific thought uh, between lots of different people using lots of different formats. That is what science is. As an educator, I also feel that students are free and intelligent human beings first. And so I do not believe in being an authoritarian. I do not believe that it is my role to control and rule over all of you. I'm not the one who has all of the answers. You guys will be making sense of what happens in the class and the phenomena that we experience. I will not control your every movement in class. You'll be the one to make the decision to sit where you like and participate when you feel comfortable. You'll be able to turn in things whenever you're ready. And if class isn't working, then we will need to talk and figure out ways together to make it work for you. So if you feel that we're doing some sort of pointless assignment, tell me, let me know. Let me know if something isn't working and I can change it. We will be working together to meet our shared goals and needs. So now let's go over some technical information. I use a messaging service called Remind, uh, which we'll be setting up 
in class. My email is teach.stuart at gmail.com. I have a website at teachstuart.wordpress.com. Um, if you ever need me for a tutorial, I'll be in room C17. Um, usually I'll be there after school as well, uh, but if you need to find me, my office is C18. That Remind Messaging app. Um, we'll set this up in class and it's on your contact information sheet. Uh, but if you send a text to 81010 uh, and the message of at and then whatever your class code is, again, that's also on your contact sheet, um, you'll be signed up for this messaging service where you will receive texts from me and you'll be able to reply to those texts directly to me. You don't need to download any app and if you have unlimited text, there will be no extra charge or anything like that. I do want to show you my website. Again, that's teachstuart.wordpress.com. And my website looks like this here. You can always make sure that it is my website because it'll have my picture. Same thing for my email address. It should come up in Gmail with this same picture. The best way to navigate this site is to scroll down and go to either biology or AP bio, depending on your class. Um, the main use of this website will be to find the various homeworks that I assigned throughout the year. Um, and they'll be one of the first links on there. You'll just be able to click that link and go to uh, a video or web page that describes what the homework is. You can also check uh, your grade by going to Synergy, doing the parent or student view. For your homework, whenever I assign something, I would like you to set it up in Cornell Notes style. Uh, you've probably experienced Cornell Notes with your various other classes. I don't want you to be intimidated or frustrated with setting things up in a very specific way. Um, just Cornell Notes is very helpful. When you do Cornell Notes, you set up your page with your title on the top, um, a line down the middle or off to the side. You use one side is you're going through your notes to write down your main ideas, supports, examples, any vocabulary, important ideas, diagrams, all that goes down on this first column when you are first reading or watching the information. After you've gone through once, you reflect on the process and you write down your thoughts, reflections, any questions that you have. You can add any pictures or extra ideas, but you do this after you've read or watched any video. Um, and after you've done that, at the end, you write a summary, try to write in full sentences. Um, this is a way to help your brain condense and consolidate all the information that you've learned in the notes, um, which helps you to better learn. We'll go over this again throughout the school year. So whenever I assign a homework, it'll typically be due the very next day. And so what I expect you to bring to class each day is your notebook with whatever homework or assignments that we've been working on, um, as well as your something to write with. You don't need to bring the textbook every day. Um, you don't need to bring any extra stuff. Again, that's just a writing utensil, your notebook, and any assignments that we've been working on. At the start of class, every day, we'll be doing a class opener, and there'll be a specific way to set up your page um, in order to do this. In your notebook, uh, you'll be responsible for initially writing your response to an individual prompt. After that, you will need to write down answers, alternative answers from other people at your table. Um, we'll review these, then we'll do a second uh, prompt or activity we'll, where you will work as a group to answer or respond to some information. Each group will then share out their group activity to the whole class, and then at the end you'll have a chance to write down any questions that still remain or anything that you would like, um, and we'll take some time in class every day to review some of these questions. In my class, I do what's called proficiency or standards-based grading. There are a handful of objectives that we're gonna be trying to meet throughout the year. You will need to demonstrate proficiency or highly proficient on all of them in order to receive a passing grade in my class. Each assignment that you do, when I give you feedback, I will grade it on this grading scale. Highly proficient is the best, proficient is good, Close to proficient is not quite good enough, and developing proficiency is the lowest grade that you can get. 
when your report card comes out, it'll be an A, B, C, or F. No Ds. In order to get an A, you'll have a mix of highly proficient and proficient grades with 50% or more being highly proficient, and you'll have no close to proficient and no developing proficient on any of the standards. To get a B, again, it'll be a mix of highly proficient and proficient with at least 25% uh, being highly proficient, no close to proficient, no developings. A C in the class would be a mix of highly proficient and proficient, but less than 25% highly proficient. And again, no close to proficient or developing proficient. An F is essentially if you have any close to or developing proficiencies on any of the single standards. That might sound very scary, very harsh, uh, but you should know that you will always be able to redo rework any assignment, um, do additional work on any standard in order to bring your grade up from a developing or a close to proficient up to proficient or highly proficient. The goal is to be proficient or more on all of the standards. You're gonna be able to redo or fix any work, any in-class assignments, any projects or tests until you get highly proficient or proficient. That means I accept late work all the way up until the last day of the semester, which will be like January 22nd for the first semester or June 8th for the second semester. So again, always come to me if you have questions and I will be working with you to uh, make sure you meet proficiency on every single expectation, every single objective of the class. Lastly, I'd like to give you a quick tour of the class so you know where, where a few things are. Um, this year I have to move classrooms between two classrooms, C17 and C15, and in each of those classes I will have a cart with me, which looks like this, and um, on the top of the cart will be a basket for you to turn in any assignments, and you can see here it goes by second period, third period, fourth period, eighth period. On this cart there will also be the bathroom pass, which you'll need to take with you if you go to the bathroom, and down below will be all of the papers that I'll be passing out, so if you miss a class you'll be able to check this box to find any assignments that you might have missed. There'll also be a folder where I'll keep all assignments that don't have a name, so that's all for now. To finish this video, I'm gonna leave you with a song that I enjoy. I'll be doing this for every homework that I make for the biology class, AP, you're out of luck. Uh, but if you like listening to it, you can check the link right down here. Um, it's also in the comments. And as always, uh, be ready to ask great questions and I'll see you in class.